my podcast. So this episode is about my third week of FSY this summer, and I was in Ronert Park, California at Sonoma State. The title, as you can see, is The Many Holy Reasons. And on day zero, we were trying to think about a title because I told my co-counselor Avalon, isn't that an awesome name by the way, Avalon? I told my co-counselor Avalon and my co-counselor Isaac that I wanted to come up with a cool title for our week. And so we were looking for different things and different titles that we could use, different themes. And so we came up with this this title, The Many Holy Reasons. First, we had The Many Reasons. And I was like, that's not right. They're, we're missing something. Anyway, I'll get to that in a second. But day zero, Sunday, was pretty awesome when we met all together. It's not mandatory that you meet on Sunday night because California is very strict with their laws. And so you're not actually working on Sunday night, technically. So they don't have you do any of the meetings with your AC or anything like that. They just have you do the big meeting with the session advisors and then your co's. We were talking and just kind of chatting, getting to know each other. They don't technically have us plan either since we aren't actually working. So we are just kind of getting to know each other and socializing. Um, Avalon had this question for us to kind of think about. She said, what are the experiences we wouldn't have had if we weren't together. As in, what miracles or what reasons or what possible cool things happened because we were put together as a co-ship? We were kind of thinking about that. And that kind of went into the title too, the, the many reasons. And later, the many holy reasons. As I was getting to know Isaac and Avalon, I was still kind of talking to Keegan and Heather from the week before. And Keegan told my co's, Kyra is a spiritual giant and is one of the most spiritual women I know. Which, that was huge. That was such a nice compliment. So I'm really, really grateful for that, for Keegan saying that. And it was really just rewarding to hear that because I feel like I do try really hard to be someone that is spiritually in tune and someone that the Lord can trust in. So I was really grateful for what he said. And then Heather was also super nice and she told my co's, that I'm amazing and will bring the spirit to all the activities we do together. And she said, if I don't bless the used lives, I'd bless theirs. And I was just astounded by how nice that was. And I was really grateful. So thank you, Heather and Keegan. Very nice of you. It was also nice because Avalon and Isaac didn't know me yet. And Heather and Keegan were speaking highly of me. So that was good. So that night, after we were kind of socialized a little bit, we decided to play Jackbox And we played Quiplash, which I'm not the biggest fan of Quiplash because I'm not good at it. I'm not witty and I'm not funny. But we played and I got two Quiplashes, which means that everyone voted for mine over someone else's. And I never win that game, ever. But somehow I did, by some miracle. That was the first time I've ever won that game. One of the answers that I got a Quiplash on was, what's another name for the Beach Boys if they had never seen the beach or something like that? And so I said, the land lads, and everyone voted for that. So I felt proud of that, the land lads. And then prior to playing Quiplash, we played a different game. And Keegan ended up talking about like being the OG lobster chef. It was just this inside joke. One of the things was saying something about a celebrity owning a wax figure of someone in their home and like who would the wax figure be of. And I said, the OG lobster chef, and everyone voted for me. So I felt kind of awesome there, and it was awesome. (laughs) I appreciate being witty every once in a while. It doesn't happen very often, but the times that it does, it's very fun. Okay, so day one. This is where I was kind of skipping ahead, but in our morning meeting when we were talking about all the logistics, they also shared a little spiritual thought. And what it said on the board was, what is your holy reason for being here? And I wrote, yo, that was directly related to my title for this week. And so originally it was the many reasons for being together, the many reasons. And then after this, it was the many holy reasons. And I really loved that. It was exactly what I needed to add. And I was really grateful that she shared that. So that was really awesome. Then Avalon said something very nice to me that day. She said, I feel like you are divinely designed for a very specific purpose in this life. 
I knew that within the first two minutes of meeting you. Avalon is also divinely designed because she is extremely thoughtful and extremely intelligent. She's extremely mindful of others and she is very spiritual. And I am extremely blessed that I got to work with Avalon for a week and Isaac. But Avalon was a really great female co and I learned a lot from her. So our chant that I wrote down is either the boys or the girls say because we like switched it up. Uh, let's be strong. And then the response is, in what? And then the call is, in confidence. The response is, in what? Strong in confidence. So it goes, let's be strong. In what? In confidence. In what? Strong in confidence. Yeah, super, super cheesy, but that's how they go. And we were pretty proud of it. So that was awesome. I wrote down for day one, this is a Monday. I'm in such a good mood today, which is ironic since I don't feel physically great. I'd rather be physically a little unwell than emotionally slash mentally. And then like day three or four, I went back up to this note and said, perhaps I've changed my mind (laughs) because I got so sick, which I'll get back to. And then I wrote, I work great with Isaac and Avalon. I love them a lot. I also wrote, I love my youth. They are precious. I just love them. I'm so excited to spend the week with them. The beginning of the week can sometimes be hard because they don't know me yet And I don't know them yet. And it's almost like I have to convince them to like me. Or convince them to know that I care. And maybe that makes me sound like I care all about myself. And that's not true. But the truth is that when you have a connection with someone, they're more likely to listen and to respect and to to kind of soak in what you're saying. And on day one, they don't know you. I'm sure some of them, at least, think that this is just a job to you. And you're just here. And it's hard for me on day one because I don't I don't want them to have that mindset. I want them to know that I genuinely do care about them. And so day one is just always hard for me, almost always. And it's hard to to kind of establish those connections when you just you want so badly to just jump into, you know, the nitty gritty of just like the deep and the vulnerable, but you have to wait for them to be ready, for them to be a little bit adjusted and then and then you can kind of open up. But Yeah, Mondays are just hard for me. I do want to say they were all tuned in during Meet Your Company, and it made it very, very enjoyable. Avalon is super smart with how to memorize names. She had really good monikers and things like that. Like, she would find something about them, and then that's how she would remember their name, and it worked out really well. I was very impressed with her. She is very smart, very intelligent, as I said. So we played Snatch It at Meet Your Company, and the boys... (laughs) cream the girls and then we switched it up so we just kind of like randomized it and it was super close like down to the wire down to one person one of my boys kept saying my name and I think it's hilarious I would say thank you and I'd say his name and he would say you're welcome Kyra and it was just really funny to me and I thought it was I don't know it just kind of made me happy made me smile almost every time I wrote down I forgot to clock in which is tough I wrote down that I like company tables. It's fun. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I think it'll only get better. So that week, they asked us to sit together as a company, like as a rule. So rather than having the youth go sit wherever, we were supposed to sit together as a company. And it was really nice. I feel like it really unified us and gave us more time with the youth. Because in California, you don't have as much time with the youth. You have a lot of breaks and stuff. So I really enjoyed having meals with them and getting to know them better. There's also just something about having a meal together that's just kind of bonding, you know, just kind of makes bonds and makes connections. I wrote down, I am getting sick, very ill, and I'm not happy about that at all. I just don't understand. Dang it. I had airborne tablets and medicine delivered to me via Walmart, and I was really hoping that that would help. I also was just praying and living on a prayer that I would feel better. And that's kind of a roller coaster and kind of complicated, but I'll get to that. That night at company home evening, we just played an hour worth of home evening games. And then we were having a lesson about goal setting. And I just felt prompted to share a little story about two of my young men from the year before and how it's more than a job to me. And then I read my blog post, which you all probably know about. I also did a podcast episode of me reading it. I miss them too, and I got a little bit emotional. And one of the ACs, her name's Meta, she came up and later she said, I might have read that just for her. 
And she said, wow, I stopped by for five minutes and you make me cry. <laughs> so that, that felt rewarding too, that I was following a prompting and that it was proof that I was. Company goal setting was super good. I wrote down, I think I spoke with power and authority. I got a little emotional, which made it more powerful. The used faces changed and were contemplative, so that's cool. I wrote down that Avalon said one of my one of our young women had a very ponderous face on. I think that's a word. Anyway, ponderous face on, and that it touched her. And then Avalon told me later, she said, my little Devo, <laughs> which I laughed at, had three messages in it. She said, it. number one, it taught that God loves them. Number two, it taught that God misses them. And number three, it taught that I loved them and was there for them. And I wrote, hee hee, multiple reasons, just along with our title. Our health coordinator, Brian, came and just joined us. He just kind of sat down and joined us. And it worked out because later I texted him and asked him for a priesthood blessing because I was not feeling well. I said, I am not faring well. And my no. And then I wrote, bless Avalon's heart and soul. She is switching my lights out so I could come get ready for bed and rest an hour and a 15 minutes early. And then I told her I'd take hers the next day, which I did. So she just switched me and it was so sweet, so, so, so sweet of her. And I know that she was being my earthly angel at that moment because I was not doing well. I'm convinced I had a fever. I'm not going to lie, <laughs> which we'll talk about a little bit more later. So in the priest of blessing, I asked for one because I felt very sick, but nothing in the blessing said anything about getting better. And I wrote, uh-oh. <laughs> I wrote down, I'm really holding on to and any other blessings Heavenly Father feels to give you at this time, having my healing in it. So typically after a priest of blessing, before they close it, they'll say, bless you with all these things and any other blessings Heavenly Father feels to give you at this time. And so after the blessing was over, I joked that I really hoped that little sentence had my healing in it because the rest of the blessing didn't say anything about getting better. And I wrote down, I'm seeking and expecting a miracle, please. In the blessing, I was blessed with peace. I was blessed to know that everything will be okay. Heavenly Father said that he is proud of me and is proud of the path that I'm on, uh, that it's the right one. In the blessing, it also said, Heavenly Father is proud of the example I am to his precious daughters. It also said that I was blessed with wisdom to know how to solve my problems, which I laughed at that. I wrote, airborne? Ha <laughs> ha. And then this was interesting. I said, most shockingly, he talked about having peace of mind that Heavenly Father is going to take care of my family while I'm here serving the youth. He will take care of my family. And I'd been a little bit worried about them. So this was really comforting to me. And I know that... Heavenly Father really was speaking through him. Brian took lots of pauses during the blessing, and I greatly respect and appreciate that. I was really impressed that he knew that you don't need to speak really quickly during a blessing or a prayer. You can listen. And I know that he was really listening to what Heavenly Father was trying to tell him because you don't have to speak really fast. You know, you can wait and listen for what's kind of coming to mind. So I, I appreciated that and respected that. I wrote down, I'm trying to remember everything else. Unfortunately, nothing about being healed or feeling better. And then I said, I think I genuinely have a fever. Oh, crap. Please, Father, I'm expecting a miracle. Day two, I wrote, it's 1247 a.m. right now, and I'm sitting outside my apartment. I woke up at 1220 a.m. and needed to use the restroom. I ran my feet under cold water and put my hair up in an attempt to cool off because the apartments there didn't have air conditioning. So... It wasn't the best scenario. Luckily, it was pretty cool outside, so it wasn't too much of a problem. But I was feeling really hot. So as I was laying there, I decided to come outside. And I wrote, it's slightly weird, not going to lie. I'm just sitting out here at 12.40 a.m., just chilling. <laughs> but I needed to cool off, and it's cool outside. Not cold, but cooler. And then I wrote, I'm currently out here because the blessing said, give me the wisdom to know how to solve my problems. And I said, well, being sick is a problem. Being hot is a problem. Hence, I'm trying to follow what my brain is saying in order to solve the issues. And I wrote, I don't know if this is what Heavenly Father meant, but here we are. <laughs> so that was funny. I wrote down, I'm feeling a lot better this morning. Still not great, but better than last night when I was very ill and flushed and warm. Last night was rough, but I genuinely do feel better. It's a mini miracle. Well, actually, a big miracle. I taught gospel study that day. I shared the story about one of my young men from two years ago. I wrote, each youth participated in red. I saw everyone writing things down, so that was good. 
and I told them that I was greatly impressed with them and proud of their efforts and participation. I shared DNC 1810 with one of my young men, talks about the worth of soul. And then I wrote down, went back to feeling horrendous. Yay. <laughs> oh, I said, if I had to get sick somewhere, California was the place to do it because of all the breaks that we get. We were having a training meeting and someone joked about the training meeting going over. And we in California had to clock in and clock out and clock in and clock out. And so I just joked, I said, respectfully, I need to clock out. <laughs> you probably don't understand what I'm saying. And honestly, in the context, I don't, I wouldn't really understand. Without the context, I wouldn't understand what I'm saying either. But yeah, anyway, Avalon said something funny. She was saying, <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> she was saying that she didn't have anything to do. And so she says, I'll just beat you up while I'm off. So I have something to do later. To like heal me or, or you know, give me band-aids or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> it was just random. It was funny. Uh, one of my young men, they were practicing the cheer. And they were like, you know, I don't know, like pretend pushing each other. I said, guys, remember, no violence. And she says, it's not violence. It's bullying. <laughs> and I was like, oh my. So we wrote that down. Another quote that someone said that this was just actually a, a spiritual thought. This wasn't anyone from my company. Lauren Dalton said, We need to trust that we did what God wanted and know that even if we didn't get to hear the rest of the story, we did what he wanted and blessings will happen. I don't actually know where that came from, but I have that down. And it says Lauren Dalton said that, but it wasn't one of my youth. So I don't know who that is. But anyway, I wrote it down. So I wrote, act on promptings, even if that doesn't make sense. Do you want to be part of his army? And then I wrote down, trust me with a prompting, and I promise I'll follow through. Okay, day three, Wednesday. The thing that I have to remind myself of again and again and again is that I don't know the full extent of the impact I'm making. I simply don't know the rest of the story for most of the promptings that I get. And that was just something that I was thinking about and writing down. Because sometimes I get discouraged that I'm just, like, not making a difference or that my efforts don't matter. And I wrote down that I have to remember that I don't know the full extent. The Heavenly Father knows. And as long as I'm doing what he's prompting me to do, then I'm then I'm doing good. We wrote down some co-goals. So our, my co-counselors, they were in one of the training meetings. We were talking about goals. So I wrote down, I will create co-unity by asking questions. That can lead to deeper connections and deeper responses. I will create co-unity by being a better listener. I will create co-unity by giving sincere compliments and looking for the good in them. I wrote down, it is so cold at games night. So we started huddling like penguins. I got some funny pictures of the youth huddling. It was kind of funny. <laughs> oh, okay. I wrote down, pizza night was really good. We had a photo competition with the boys. Like who could create the funnier and more creative pictures with pizza and the girls all all agreed that the boys won which was a little bit sad to me because even though they did do good and I'll give them that the girls did good too I mean one of our pictures we just copied from someone else the other picture well both of them were kind of copies I'm not gonna lie and then the third one was just sad we just held up our pizza <laughs> so there was no creativity there the boys were definitely more creative than we were Okay, day four, Thursday, I wrote, I feel like garbage once more. Yay! <laughs> and then one of my girls was funny, so she was wanting to, like, get her hands wet, and she had a cup of water, and it was in a glass cup, and she's like, I want it to sweat more so I can wash my hands, <laughs> you know, because how there's uh, condensation on cups or whatever, so she wanted it to get more so she could kind of wipe her hands on it, which I thought was funny. I wrote down, it's fun to see the boys' hair because they don't wear hats on Thursday since we're all dressed up in our Sunday best. One of my young women was talking about the sweet old lady that complimented her dress. So that week, I think it was just Thursday, Wednesday and Thursday, or I don't know. Anyway, part of that week they had an elderly camp or something there. So there was just a whole bunch of elderly people around and we were all sharing the dining hall together. And she said... Some sweet old lady complimented her dress. And so my young one was like, some sweet old lady just complimented my dress. <laughs> it was just adorable. It was absolutely adorable. So it was really cold again that morning. So I went back to grab sweatshirts with three of the girls. I wrote down, the young one activity went really well. The girls had good thoughts and insights. The Book of Mormon is true. I felt prompted to give one of my co-workers, Gretchen, she's a counselor, a quote. And she said she really needed it. 
I shared the story about one of my young men from two years ago, but told the girls they would probably have to hear it t again because I wanted to tell the boys too. But it's a good thing I followed the prompting to tell them that night because I had quarantine from lunch on the next day. Hopefully the person who needed to hear it was able to. So yeah, isn't that fun? I just spoiled it. But yeah, I got to quarantine the next day, which we'll get to. Just a little peek though, little little spoiler there. I worked and I was feeling really discouraged and Avalon noticed. I gave all the girls hugs and one of my girls squeezed me and said, I love you. And I started crying and said, you have no idea how much I needed that. Because I was just feeling so discouraged. And so it was really comforting to get a hug from one of the young women and to hear that I really was making a difference. Just in those three simple words. Because I wrote down, I kid you not, I feel like I haven't made a difference. <laughs> so that's tough. So to hear that she loved me, it felt good and I was very grateful. And then Avalon and I talked for over an hour and it was such a good talk. She talked about how my story could be the story that helps others because I mentioned how I love having miracles at FSY and I love having miracle stories at FSY because I like to be able to use them to consecrate them for good and use them to bring others to the gospel and to Christ. And I just felt like I was just lacking and it was really hard being a sick, and I just, anyway, it was just tough. We talked about how I feel like a failure if a miracle or something awesome doesn't happen, but awesome things are happening, and I just couldn't see them. And so I, I got done, maybe I should ask Heavenly Father to help me see one example of the rest of the story. And I don't know. So yeah, I just wrote that down. And then I wrote, I'm very blessed to have Isaac and Avalon as my co I wrote down, I'm still feeling so sick and it's making me so frustrated. When am I ever going to get better? I really, really hope it's soon. Pretty, pretty please. Okay, day five. Here we go. I wrote down something that one of my young ones said at breakfast because it was just hilarious. She wrote, I'm 5'5", five five, so I just round up to six feet. <laughs> I thought that was so funny. Oh... So I had a great start to the day, and then I realized I had pink eye. So the week before, one of my young women had pink eye on Friday, and she had to go home early. And so I was like, I really hope I didn't get that. Well, I was just super sick, and I think my immune system was just down because I was sick. And then I had pink eye. So here's what's amazing. And I wrote down, the these are the miracles for today. Avalon was so amazing when I told her. We took pictures during the sharing the gospel activity and company pictures and stuff because I knew that once I told the health coordinators that I had pink eye, I wouldn't get pictures. And I really wanted pictures. And so we were able to do that. And we texted Isaac and he came off his break so we could take pictures. So I wrote, that was a, that was a blessing. Taking pictures was a blessing. Being able to mourn and be devastated was blessing. Another miracle was that I brought a pillowcase from last week, so I had an extra this week, so I like switched my pillowcases. Another one was that I dropped my Provo session for next week, two weeks ago, which I'll talk about then a little bit. Another blessing miracle was that Isaac came off his break to take pictures with us. Another blessing was that one of my other young women used her phone to take pictures, and we didn't want to use my phone because of germs, and so we were able to use her phone. And we just quickly airdropped, which airdropping is not allowed because they don't want you to airdrop inappropriate pictures. But since she was just sending me the pictures of the company, we figured it was okay. So this was something that I'll probably write a blog post about, but it's not long enough for a podcast episode. Is that when I had pink eye at lunch, I decided I was going to eat lunch and then go quarantine or whatever. I absolutely love pineapple and watermelon, and all week, that week and the week before, they had pineapple and watermelon, like, off and on, so they would have pineapple and another fruit one day, and then they'd have watermelon and another fruit one day, and so they just had to have different fruit, and that day, on Friday, when I had to quarantine, they had both. They had pineapple and watermelon, which were two of my favorites, and they had never had both of them out before. And so I told Avalon that, and she said, it's a reminder that God loves me and is aware of me. So I really liked that. And she said, she said something that is probably going to be a blog post, like I said. She said, undefined miracles. And I felt like that was a freaking men. And here was another thing that she wrote. She says, she feels like me being forced to leave 
was kind of a forceful, forced and painful miracle, but having pink eye and having to leave kind of proved to the kids that I really did care about them, kind of, because they, they felt sad that I was gone and they wanted to visit me. And then another undefined miracle was that I was able to take pictures with everyone. I felt prompted to drop my Provo session two weeks prior, and it reminded me of the time when I broke my arm and I had decided to quit basketball two weeks before I broke my arm. So they're just miracles that we don't immediately think of, but they really are. They're just undefined miracles. So the Provo session, this was a huge, 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 huge miracle. So when I was in Provo on Friday night, it was actually Saturday morning because it was past midnight. I just sat there and I just thought, I can't do this again. Like Provo is just hard. It's just really hard. And it's such a big campus. There's just so many people there. And it's just kind of, it's just hard. It's just different beast. And I sat there and thought, I can't do this again. Like, I, I just can't. And I, I don't know if I can do this again in two weeks. And so I talked to my AC, Emily, and she's just wonderful. And she says, Kyra, I give you permission to drop your session. I give you permission. And so I was like, I just, I don't know. I feel bad. I feel like it's almost selfish of me not being here when, you know, I could use my talents and my tools and, and use my heart and my soul to, to connect with others. But I just, I just can't do this. And she says, what if you dropping this gives some of the girls the counselor that they need? And I was like, you know what? You're right. So anyway, I ended up dropping it two weeks before the session started they ask you to drop a session at least 14 days before. And I literally dropped it 14 days before. So it was an undefined miracle though. Because the end of California, I was still super sick. And I just had pink eye on Friday. And so I would have had to quarantine for the beginning of the next week. And I would have been super, super sick in Provo. Which just would have been not good at all. So it was just a huge, huge, huge blessing. And a huge miracle that I had felt prompted and wanted to drop my session in Provo two weeks prior to my session actually happening. So there you go. So day six on Saturday, back in California, I wrote down that I woke up at 3 a.m. and couldn't sleep for a long time after. So I just gave up and watched a movie on my phone. (laughs) And that's kind of how that went. And then traveling home in the airport, Being sick and flying and going on a shuttle and going on a bus, that was miserable. That was really miserable. That whole day was just really not fun at all because I was super sick. I felt just kind of dizzy and woozy. I had a headache. I was kind of flushed. I had pink eye. Like, it was just all not fun at all. And I had to travel home. So, yeah, not a fan of that. Not a fan of (laughs) that whole experience of being sick. But I was able to go home. And then I was able to get a week off to kind of recuperate, recuperate. But then I was sick again for like the rest. And it didn't really get better for like three weeks. So I was sick while in California. I was sick my week right off after that. I was sick again the week after that, just still sick. And then when I was in Arizona, because I was visiting my family, I got a sinus infection. So it was just all disaster. (laughs) And I didn't feel good. I didn't feel better for like a month. It was very painful. But overall, I feel like my weeks in California were very successful. I definitely had kind of a harder time those two weeks. My first week, I was just mentally discouraged and mentally kind of sad And then my second week, I was very, very physically ill, and I kind of got discouraged here and there. But I was so blessed with so many miracles, both undefined and really clear, obvious miracles. And two of them were that I was blessed with my co's, Avalon and Isaac, and then obviously Heather and Keegan the week before. But Avalon was just amazing, and she helped me in so many different ways, kind of debrief things and process things. And I told her that I would love to stay friends for the rest of our life. So we're going to work on that. But yeah, I just am really grateful. I I know that Heavenly Father was in the details of, of that. And I know that even though I had pink eye and had to quarantine on Friday, that it could have happened before and I wouldn't have been able to see the kids. 
but instead it happened, it kind of showed itself on Friday and morning, and so I was able to spend, ideally, the whole week with them, and I'm really, really grateful for that. I just know, I know, I know, I know the Heavenly Father was there the whole time, and he was blessing me in ways that I probably still don't even, I probably still didn't even notice, but I know that he was there, and he he let me know that he was there, and I'm grateful for that. I felt very often, it will be okay, it will be okay. And I just knew that it would be. So I'm very grateful. Very grateful. It was not fun being sick. And sometimes I reminded about how sick I was. And then I just feel grateful again that I'm not sick now. And that everything worked out. So anyway, a lot of gratitude. And I'm grateful that I was able to get a priest of blessing. Even though it said nothing about getting better. <laughs> but I just look back and I'm grateful that, that it all worked out. And that it happened on Friday instead of Thursday or happened on Friday instead of Wednesday and that I was able to get pictures and the Avalon was so calm and it just all of it really worked out and I just am very grateful so thank you guys so much for listening don't forget to embrace imperfection find meaning satisfaction and joy from the journey I'm Kyra and this is imperfectly broken the podcast Do-do-do-do.